There was a paper published a few years back that helps with our first fact about Gobekli Tepe that you won't have heard of yet. This paper identified one pillar at Gobekli Tepe as aligning to the moon's rising point on the horizon. We call that the minor lunar standstill, but don't worry if you don't know what that means. People like Graham Hancock and Andrew Collins looked at the bright star Deneb in Cygnus. This is different. I mean, this could be fact number one, but the problem with looking for alignments at Gobekli Tepe is you don't know where to measure from. See, they're not even circles, right? And later they were rectangles. And I should note that the megalithomania guys like Hugh Newman, they found one good solstice alignment at Karahan Tepe, and the lead excavators, both Klaus Schmidt and Lee Claire, both said religion seems to have been a big part of Gobekli Tepe, but can we link it to anything in the sky? What if the fact that there are two central pillars in most enclosures means each enclosure was actually two centers put together? All right, so who out there is old enough to remember Laser Floyd at your local planetarium? Because you're in for a treat, man. If you go to the planetarium software, Stellarium, to get the rising and setting points of the sun and moon for these people during the time the carbon dating says, around 9500 BCE, you get this handy dandy tool, a 360 degree protractor we can use to place over the original radar scans here before they started digging. See how it all fits in all four corners here, north and south are there, which leads us to fact number one, there are well over 150 lunar and solar alignments at Gobekli Tepe. This enclosure is called the Lion Pillars Building. It was in use just before Gobekli Tepe was buried. And oh yeah, ignore the snake here. This was uh, 8,000 BC. We'll come back to the snake, but for here you need to see the Chatohoya plan. This is every level of excavation that spans almost 2,000 years after this, after Gobekli Tepe taking us to the rise of Mesopotamia and whole towns being aligned to the sun or moon like Jericho or Ur was uh, the city of the moon and it was aligned to the major lunar standstills. The whole city was. And there's as much difference between the time period of this first enclosure you saw, the D, and this one as time between us and the end of the Roman Empire. So there had to be some change. Uh, this is enclosure H, a little older and circular, uh, not fully excavated yet, and they say their Dr. Claire says they're gonna be back there soon. We're gonna look at the right hand of all the central pillars to see these alignments. But here you see right away, one, two, three at least. It looks like all corners are there, but one pillar's not, you know, it's broken. Number two. And this feline carving shows you that for sure this is the you know the right paw if not the right hand this is a still frame from the prehistory guys when they were talking to lee claire and i'm just saying the moon would rise right behind there over the hills in the back there only once every 18.6 years though in this enclosure but going back farther in time let's try this with every pillar that's in the center and starting with a1 the first one enclosure a pillar one and look this niche here it looks like its only function is to be here for this right hand thing and then bam solstice alignments there's that wall is a solstice 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 you can use all of these for the solstice maybe further down there but uh, actually oh those two niches really are aligned actually but holy smokes for the green lines which represent the widest range the moon can be at during the solstices here the minor lunar stencil goes right through this hole here but uh, this building alone makes the case for the importance of the major lunar standstills where the moon would rise only, or set only once every 18.6 years. It's like they're framing each corner of the horizon and, you know, there's hills in the way and stuff, but they used all four corners of the hill too, which you'll see another day. Again, this yellow area is later, sort of blocks their view, but it, it makes a frame. And here's pillar two, north and south, at least two pillars there. Yeah, the blocked view here, see here, this is a blocked view. And then, bam, 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 major lunar standstill was so important to them. And then three more, bam, 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 major lunar standstill there too. 
and then the solstice lines there's what one two three four five six solstice ones there maybe the that sort of spot on the on the wall is good east and west you got lots of stuff and then we go up here now up in b north is clear south is framed and then at least two in this trident here right maybe three these two might be meant for the next pillar over we'll check but it's in line with the major lunar standstill and here too there's four up in here and a couple on the solstices here and then what four on the minor lunar standstills here at least i mean east and west for sure again the walls look as involved as the pillars and way out here again you get the minor lunar standstill Okay, here's the other central pillar. You can see a great offering spot here again on the right side in this. This is a Hugh Newman pick. Thanks, Hugh. And then for the alignments though, see definitely to the north, frame to the south. The whole trident is framed here again. This whole wall is aligned to the minor lunar standstill. And then the major lunar standstill, bam, bam, bam again. They liked it. The major lunar standstill here might be this whole tunnel, really. Or the laneway, whatever you call it. And a couple of solstices. The minor lunar standstill, complicated, but it's there. East and West again. Pillar 12 here is a doozy we'll come back to. This guy again. For the solstice. And the minor learner stands still here is clear. And then this laneway for the whole major lunar standstill again. But here's a little sneaky surprise where our protractor shows more about each enclosure being two enclosures or two merged circles and on the base of this pillar they found what could only be for offerings i mean you pour water in here and it seeps into the earth it's an offering I mean, look how much real estate this one gobbles up and this one same thing And then over here, the largest pillars are always in the trident like this. I mean, the other pillars are a mess. We'll come back to it another day. And I'm not sure about this niche. How about now? It's definitely major lunar standstill there. And a couple more in the major lunar standstill down there. Again, like this, this whole thing is a frame up, I tell you. It's a frame up. And then east, why is there a break in that wall? But west for sure. North here for sure. And then south, you'll see south in a second on the other pillar, blow your mind. Okay, only three left. So here's a cupule to tell us again that offerings may have always been given and taken with the right hand, which is hiding right there. But there's another one right in the center, right where the center is. There's another one right there. Let you know we're on the right track at least. And man, these niches. There must have been statues here. I mean, wow. See, there's south. Right away, you see the south is that entrance. And. The largest of the pillars are doing some work here, man. This niche. Oh. Here, let's zoom in there. Right?
right? Like the whole trident goes right through here. It's important. I don't know if there was a statue there at some point, maybe one of those totem-like statues they had in other enclosures for a special occasion. And it's that trident, the solstice in the Southeast. And here, reciprocal niches in a way. The southern, I mean the solstice for sure, and then two pillars on the bottom there. And there, the largest pillars do a lot. And the whole wall system again, right? And then the minor lunar stand still here, and maybe the major lunar stand still with the central pillar. East and west, any light between them was the equinox. They do this with D2, you'll see in a sec. This is the oldest enclosure. It may have spawned them all. It may have been first. We'll see as time goes. But here, I always thought this was the potential reason even to bury enclosure D because the central pillars here look to me like they were damaged. They looked broken. I always thought it was ugly, kind of, but they're excited about it now. Klaus Schmidt always thought that there should be burials here. And Lee Claire thinks they're close to getting to it. And under here, where I thought it was broken and damaged, they think there might be skeletons, like headless skeletons or skulls might be under these pieces. This might be more than just the center for defining the universe. Is the center maybe the original person who built the place is under there. But okay, so back where we just were in C, you see the alignments for D go through it. They're framing, again, the trident goes through there in a special way. Um, this is, will be a special case we'll talk about another time. Here it looks good as well. We already counted north and south here, I think, when we were down in the other enclosure. East and west, definitely in the west. Uh, the minor lure stand still here. This one might be doing double duty. And this one is critical. When we get to 18 on the other side, you'll see how these things are identical. They're, they're framing the tridents and they're using the biggest pillars to represent the tridents and partly I'll, we'll go into that another day but look at these angles here to see how it all flows down the hill so you got uh, like from the central pillar right in front of you all the way down it looks like a line right it looks like a line because it is the other pillar does this too and it goes through the biggest pillars here on the base, I thought, because this one looks broken, there's not enough room to put a, anything interesting under there, you wouldn't think. So I thought, like this one, because I spent a lot of time looking at that one, that the other ones were broken. But anyways, here we go over here. And here's what I meant by the other corner doing the same thing. So, see that framing is exactly the same. Exactly. And there's special lunar numbers on those pillars that we'll cover in a second. Here too, pillar 33 has nine by nine serpents. North and south, not much there. But this same east-west setup again, where any light between them was the equinox. And then a good solstice one here and here the oh i mean this one the major lunar stand still looks like it cuts right through this pillar to, or this uh, enclosure to cut it looks like there's two circles cut by this mls line and the wall even dents it there right oh and i didn't mention the central pillar in enclosure d here this one with the fox on it it has nine eye symbols on it. Nobody believed me about all this stuff before, but I think you're going to have to now. And then see here, this one, this is the one in the bottom left. This is the pillar 
that the moon only appears over once every 18.6 years. And here you have 18 vulvas and a couple of suspicious looking circles, right? And there's actually 17 vulvas and one big one to make it like 18.6. Which brings us also to fact number three. These carvings are about the 18.6 year nodal cycle of the moon. I mean, look here, the, this is the pillar on the left here. This is pillar one again. And it's about these green serpents, the nine serpents I'm going to show you. It's nine and a bit. If there's nine and a tiny one, it's just nine and a bit, like 9.3. It's what it's supposed to be. You're counting, but this is the horizon. You're looking at the corner of the horizon in the southwest. Nine years counted in special snake heads like pillar 33 here between green lines on the pillar and on the horizon behind it, making the pillar map like similar to pillar 43. And I'll come back to this one on the right, but the only one missing here, I'll just tell you is a scorpion. So, you know, it's summer and this is confirmed on the world's oldest painted wall. Look, you got nine. Uh, it just makes sense that rectangles are about cycles of the moon. Right. And here you've got nine, we'll call them super heads again that look like this. There's two of them. So there's, uh, it's 9.3 years times two really for an understanding that the 18.6 year thing, that's only for one node to get all the way around, but there's two nodes. So they're sort of like a half turn each. And now I'll show you this snake, the serpent again on the right. It's about those lunar sand cells. And this, this whole package gets taken to Chatelhoyuk. Fact number four is that this was all done for religious reasons. Because this goes into Chatelhoyuk and that uh, diamond chain pattern shows up on their walls right beside their pillars on the eastern walls too. And so fact number five, there are some spikes in the carbon dating that coincide with the lunar nodes returning to the solstices, which we'll look at next time. If you've made it this far, you're amazing. Look, even this here, these, uh, the way the serpents come together here, uh, that's making a diamond shape in the end. That's how the diamond shape is made. And you're looking, oh, this one's crazy because there's 55 on it. And that's another multiple of 18.6. They were just watching for when the solstices come back. Uh, the node comes back around to the solstices and there are spikes in the carbon data when that happens. Like here, there's nine serpents coming out of this water bird that can control serpents. I talked about this in the last video and nine above too. There's 14 of other things. There's all lunar numbers on here and I'll show you this constellation next time. But I'm almost out of time for today, so I'll leave you with this. And this took me 10 years, so like and subscribe, eh?